Hey there, and welcome back to Hold and Modify, YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga channel. And today, we are going to be covering the SMB 2 and 3 network update. Um, now, I'm not saying this came out just today. Like, we're, it's actually April 1st, so this is not April Fool's, by the way. But apparently there was an update in March, and then there was actually another one in January that I missed that was covering both of the files needed for SMB2 networking as I've co covered in previous videos. So, oopsie, um, I need to maybe uh, get these updated because remember, the SMB2 and 3 support, while amazing and awesome, is still most certainly a work in progress and there's always you know, things to be updated and, and to be had and oh, all kinds of good stuff. So we're gonna go in here and you already see I have my old SMB2 and 3 folder. And what I'm gonna do is, well, We'll go ahead and delete this old stuff because, you know, I have access to these files and I can delete them and I can always put them back. So we'll go ahead and hit delete. And then we'll go over here to transfer. And once again, we're using our lovely Dopus up here. And I have an SMB folder here. And as you'll see, there's an update for file sysbox. And there's an update for the SMB23. So one of the things they've done is you'll see that there's a 68,000 version now for both um, file sysbox and SMB2FS, as well as a 16020 version. So you've got the ability now, if you're accelerated Amigas or you're not accelerated Amigas, to uh, hopefully better utilize this. And not, it's not that I'm complaining about uh, SMB2. So far, it's been great. I haven't had any real issues with it. Yeah, obviously, you still can't unmount once it's been mounted. And also, there is uh, there's still no GUI to set it up. You have to create the uh, text file basically to kind of bring life, bring, bring, it, bring it to life, so to speak. And that's this little, uh, you always see this on my desktops on my Amiga, it's called Amiga stuff. And this is just a text file that contains the commands you need to get the share launched. And then the share name is in that file, but it also will just use the name of this file as the share. So that's a neat little thing. So if we go to our work where we've unpacked this, go to work downloads, and we're going to go ahead and go into that folder. Sure enough, here we go. So what we're going to do, I don't know if it matters what order you do this in, but I'll just go ahead and update file sysbox. I'm going to do intermediate just in case. I'm going to make sure it's, uh, I want to know where it's going to put stuff. So here it's going to ask you this question. Now the last time I did this, I don't believe yeah, I had asked any of this stuff. So for this Amiga 2500, which has a uh, 28 megahertz progressive peripheral and software 60 to 40 in it, we are going to be installing the uh, 60 to 20 plus version. So same thing here, we'll install this. And I'm sure this is probably gonna do something very similar. It'll ask you which version do you want, okay. And there you go. Now, it just copied those things to L. So we're gonna go back to Opus, Dopus, Opus, Dopus, directory, Opus. Let's go to L. And let's make sure we don't have a bunch of duplicates or anything in here. So what we've got, we still only have SMB2-handler. I don't see any duplicates or, or weirdness. All right, so what we're going to do now is quit. And let's make sure all disk activity is ended. And we'll three fingers salute. We're going to reboot. Good. So let's go down here to Amiga stuff and double click this. And hopefully this will fire up that share. Now I will say it doesn't always work. That is one of the little things, like sometimes when you first cold boot or turn on the Amiga or reboot the Amiga, it's like sometimes the Xsurf card, I don't know, it's like it doesn't quite say, hello, I'm here. I don't know what it is. So, you know, be patient. You saw it did pop up, so that's, that's good. But just don't freak out if it doesn't show up ever, okay? Just reboot your Amiga, try again. With a lot of these things, that's just how it is, okay? So here we can see all this lovely uh, stuff here. This is on my share. And it seems to be working just swell. Um, yeah, I mean, no complaints there. We can go into work. And we have all of our good stuff in here. And we can try and torture test it. This is one of the things I like to do is, uh, well, you can play mods and load stuff over the network. So here we go, we are mapped to our share. So we'll go scene load. Let's load something different. I've always load kind of the same stuff for you all. And I wanna maybe do something different. What, what's in here, logos? Um, World of New Tech. 
let's load world of new tech what is that going to look like here i'm sure it'll be just amazing and wonderful and it'll dazzle us we'll be so dazzled all right so it's loaded up now we'll go ahead and click continue i have no idea what we're going to see well well look at that that's uh that's a, a is that the globe is that a, is that an earth so one of the things i do want to point out by the way is that you're going to see if we go to camera and what i want to show you is when we go back to layout so i put this monitor this uh this is a tv set by the way this is my lg tv set it's not a computer monitor it's a tv set and i put it in four by three mode because you know hey amiga four by three mode but if, as you notice here look how look how squished that that globe is i mean this is d1 this this little box here that you're seeing for d1 should definitely be wider uh for ntsc or pal it should just be wider so it's really really squished and that's because i'm using an rgb to hdmi rgb to hdmi and it it, it actually knows that you're, you're it's going to be on a 16 by 9 panel most likely and it it's kind of has its scaling built in so me setting this monitor to four by three is actually really, really incorrect. I need to actually set this monitor back to 16 by nine aspect because the RGB to HDMI is doing its thing to try and compensate. Now, is it gonna be perfect? No, but it's not gonna be this squished. So let me go ahead, stop here for a second, get this monitor switch back to 16 by nine so we're not looking at super squished Amiga Workbench and Amiga software programs. All right, well, that looks a heck of a lot better. It actually looks like a nice NTSC aspect screen, and our little earth ball here looks mostly round. A lot better than squished egg. So yeah, if you get an RGB to HDMI and you configure it for an Amiga 500 or an Amiga 2000 type computer, it, it, it knows you're using a 16 by nine display. I don't know if it auto detects that or if they're just assuming we're all using that and that's what the settings are. I could go through all of the RGB to HDMI settings using the clicky buttons on the back, but Eh, that's a whole other video, right? I think I actually made that video. Anyway, we're back to the Amiga looking proper. And just to make sure you can look on the side here, what do you see? Black bars. This is a 16 by 9 monitor. We're in 16 by 9 aspect ratio, but we still have black bars because, yeah, it's properly, the RGB to HDMI is properly scaling that Amiga image now over here. So the last couple of videos I've made with this 2500, no one called me out on it, but yeah, I would have been screaming at the screen, Q, why is everything so squished? <laughs> anyway, that was unnecessarily long and not really sure why I did that. Let's go ahead and turn off some stuff here. Remember, this is only a 68040, only a 68040. Let's turn things down to make it go a little happy faster. And let's increase the segment memory because we can, because this Amiga does have 32 megabytes of memory. So we've got some wiggle room there. And we'll go ahead and press F9. One of the things we could do while we're doing this is go back to Workbench while Lightweave is actually rendering in the background. Well, fire up Eagle Player. Again, you're not really going to be able to hear this because how my microphone's set up. But now we're having Eagle Player play music in the background that's playing from the network while we're rendering in Lightwave. Now, it's going to be slow because Lightwave is slamming that 68040, right? But the glorious Amiga preemptive multitasking system is like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and try and play this stuff. So you see right here it says scanning games. That's the network share of my mods. And I've got the games subfolder that it's going through right now and scanning it. Now that's having to pull in data over the network, all right, which is being slowed down. Remember, the network card, the network stack does use CPU time. It uses quite a bit, actually, when you're when you're hitting it. But it did it. Even though Lightwave's in the background rendering and, and hammering the CPU right now, it played and look at that. We're playing music. And we haven't crashed. And we still have what? Of our one mega chip RAM, we have half of it. And we still have 23 megs of our 32 megs of memory. Plenty. So you don't need to go crazy. You can have all that fun stuff. Now look at that. It's rendering it there. It's got like scan lines and stuff. Oopsie, you know what that tells me? That this got rendered in field rendering mode. Uh-oh. But yeah, we got Amiga mods playing in the background, streaming in over that network using the newish updated SMB2 handler. Uh, driver, which are, they're both, so they're, by the way, that, that SMB2 dash handler and the file sys box, they're all on EmiNet, okay? I'll put a link in the description below, like always, so you can just, you know, click on that and not go Google it yourself or go to EmiNet yourself. But you know what? You should go to EmiNet yourself and try it. It's fun. It's retro. It's also just neat to search all those files. And it's really good to see progress being made on this SMB2 and 3 
support for Amiga networking and I love it. And it's, it's working here. We're not getting any, hasn't crashed. <laughs> and the network speed is reasonable considering this is a, you know, 40 megahertz or eight, 28 megahertz, 60 to 40. And there we go. We have our beautiful earth rendered with uh, all the flags of the world apparently in the background. That's neat. Okay, cool. All right, well, thanks for watching. Uh, it worked. Again, links in the description for the updated files. I'm done with this video. <laughs>